Hello there my very good friends, Andy here for What Culture Wrestling, back with another breakdown of a fresh new episode of the Vice series Dark Side of the Ring. Last week we saw them give the Chris Benoit situation the full double episode treatment and this week, well, it was all about New Jack. This fella is, of course, one of the most notorious hardcore wrestlers of all time and, by my money, maybe the most terrifying man to ever step foot in a ring. He was a natural choice for this documentary series because if you think about the mass transit incident, the Gypsy Joe incident, the Vic Grimes stuff, there is so much ground to cover and once again, Vice did a really great job. Once again, like last week, I'm going to break this thing down in a rough chronological order, not by the degree of severity or anything like that. So with that in mind, I'm Andy for What Culture Wrestling, and these are 10 things that we learned from New Jack on Vice's Dark Side of the Ring. Number 10. Art Imitating Life According to the many talking heads on this show, New Jack infused his character with what was going on in the world around him at the time. So. This meant looking at the racial tensions in Los Angeles following the Rodney King riots and indeed the incident itself. It meant, in New Jack's words, OJ Simpson, who had just killed everyone in LA. And he also pointed to South Central, the image of that particular region of the city being on the map at the time and using that as kind of an influence. Jim Cornette would essentially say to the guy, go out there and piss off some white people. And in one particularly notorious angle, they basically tried to recreate the Rodney King incident only with the roles reversed. It was Ricky Morton taking a beat down with nightsticks, he was bloodied up, he was screaming, and the predominantly white crowd were baying for blood. This led to the gangsters when they left the arena, they were confronted by an angry riotous mob. They had bricks, they had bats, and they were ready to try and knock their blocks off. So the guys got into the back of the police car, they fled the scene, and in New Jack's words, when he saw that, he knew that what they were doing was working. Number nine, a double-edged gimmick. So even if all you've seen of the gangsters in Smoky Mountain is the footage shown on this episode of Dark Side of the Ring, you can tell that these guys were absolute heat magnets. And unfortunately, because of the times and because it was a predominantly white crowd, that meant a lot of N-bombs getting hurled in their direction. As was described on the show, these crowds would apparently throw around N-bombs like the word hello. And this made the gangsters, it made D'Lo Brown, New Jack and Mustafa deeply uncomfortable. They didn't enjoy it at all. D'Lo himself pointed out that, well, that was the response that the gimmick was designed to engineer, so it shows that it's working, but at the same time, we're getting racially abused and it's horrible. And to really highlight how bad things were, New Jack told a story about the one time a white fan came up to him, kind of rubbed his arm, and then looked at his hand. When New Jack rightly said, what the hell are you doing? This guy was like, oh, I'm sorry, sir, but my dad told me that if you touch an African American, it rubs off on you, and you yourself, as a white man, start turning African American. I mean, that just kind of speaks for itself. Number eight, what really happened with mass transit. Now, you're all very knowledgeable wrestling fans. You probably know roughly what happened with mass transit. I'm not gonna break that down blow by blow, but I am gonna tell you how it came about in New Jack's words. He was facing this fella, Eric Kulas, as we know, lied about his age. He was only 17, and before the match, Kulas, who'd taken Axel Rotten spot in a match, came up to New Jack and started telling him what he wanted to do in the bout. New Jack called this the most disrespectful thing you could ever do as a pro wrestler, telling a vet what to do. And as such, when Kula said he wanted to bleed, well, New Jack made him bleed. As you've probably seen, New Jack sliced this kid right across his forehead. But the circumstances leading to this, that Kulas had gone up to him and essentially tried to lay out the match for the veteran, well, that caught everyone by surprise when viewing this episode, I think, including the Sandman. And to put it into perspective, the Sandman was in the very next match on the card. He didn't know the triggering point that made New Jack kind of go so mental with this poor kid. It's kind of crazy to think about that. Number seven, what really happened after mass transit? So Eric Kulas' father was in the crowd for this show. He watched what happened to his son go down 
as it did. And when you replay the footage on, and is featured on this Vice documentary, you can hear him shouting after the slicing, after the cutting. He's 17. Where's the effing ref? After the show, as you can imagine, Mr. Kulas, well, he had a few choice words to say to New Jack. He tried to storm the backstage area. Security wouldn't let him through. They knew that he was going to cause a commotion and try to get to New Jack. He also called him the N-word. He dropped that bomb and New Jack, in his own words, was ready to kill the guy. He said that all bets were off if it got backstage and he would have laid him to rest. Number 6. The Vic Grimes Revenge Plot When New Jack was asked on the show about his favourite ever bump, he pointed to the first Vic Grimes incident. This was a planned scaffolding spot. They were going to go off the top, but Vic got cold feet when they were up there. He said to New Jack, hey man, I'm not comfortable doing this, but New Jack said, screw that, we're going on 3, 2, 1. And of course, as they went down, they took an awkward flip, and Grimes, a big, big man, landed on New Jack's skull. And just to kind of illustrate how damaging this was, I've got a list of the injuries that New Jack suffered there. He cracked his skull. He lost vision in one eye. He broke his leg. And to this day, he has insomnia and constant headaches. And this was his favourite dive. One year later, Grimes and New Jack met in a big rematch for the XPW promotion. This is the most famous incident between the two. You know it. It's New Jack hurling Grimes off the top of an even higher scaffold almost to his death. But what triggered this? Apparently, it was because Grimes didn't reach out to New Jack after the first incident and see how he was doing. Grimes apparently, according to New Jack, tried to apologise to him backstage. New Jack said, screw that, you didn't check up on me once, and in his own words, he was ready to kill the guy. Number 5. What really happened with Gypsy Joe When New Jack was specifically asked if there was one incident in which he felt he ever went too far, he pointed to Gypsy Joe. Now, Gypsy Joe was a 72-year-old man. He was facing New Jack, and the gimmick was that he was impervious to pain. He no-sold everything. That was his character. Didn't mesh with New Jack, though, and what didn't mesh as well was before the match when Gypsy Joe said, hey, listen to me, kid. You could really learn something. This in itself partially triggered one of the most notorious shoot beatdowns wrestling has ever seen, and it got worse when the crowd started hurling racism. This was awful. Awful on both sides. Joe takes a hellacious beating, including a bunch of unprotected shots from a bat. He's thrown into chairs. Chairs are thrown on top of him. He is destroyed by this guy. And New Jack describes the situation. Every time another N-bomb came out, the worse it got. He said that when he got in there, he actually forgot that this guy was 72 years old. Now, had that knowledge kind of occurred to him mid-match, do you think it would have calmed him down? Do you think it would have lessened what happened? I don't know, man. Number 4. Different Perspectives As with last week's episode, Vice, in their even-handed approach, tried to get all kinds of perspectives on New Jack. And one of them, you know, after what we'd seen on the show so far, after mass transit and everything else, one of them was kind of surprising. I'm talking about a fella named MWW, who, and I quote here, described Jack as comical. If you really get to know him, he's just a comedian and a great cook who just wants to make sure that everybody's happy. Now, Sandman, former ECW colleague of New Jack's, of course, was similarly diplomatic. He was laughing and joking through the whole thing. He put over how serious and how real everything was, don't get me wrong, but one particular moment was quite telling. When asked if promoters saw Jack as some kind of liability, Sandman essentially said, eh, some of them might. Now, obviously, it's New Jack. You're not going to paint this guy up as the Easter Bunny. But again, Vice, in their quest to make the most accurate documentary they possibly can, they got these views. And I think the show benefited from it. Number three, how New Jack avoided 15 years in prison. The Hunter Red incident in 2004 is one that often goes forgotten. But it's kind of mental that it does, because while we're talking about mass transit and Gypsy Joe, Hunter Red was actually stabbed in the ring nine times by New Jack. Now, this created a crazy situation, as you can imagine. The cops were called, they arrested New Jack at gunpoint. He was staring down the barrel of 15 years in prison. So what saved him? Well, it wasn't a sympathetic jury, it was nothing like that. It was Hunter Red. He approached Jack while he was incarcerated, awaiting trial, and said, Listen, 
I will drop all of these charges if you work with me, we turn this into an angle and we spin it as Hunter Red out for revenge against New Jack all across the Fl Floridian circuit. My apologies. Now, kind of mental considering this guy was stabbed nine times, but New Jack was like, this is a ticket out of here. Of course he took it. But did he work the angle? Absolutely not. He put all of his possessions, all of his items, everything he owned into storage. He got the hell out of Florida and he never spoke to Hunter Red again. He worked him. He worked a man he stabbed nine times. Yeah. Number two, New Jack and Jerome Young are the same person. If we were talking about any other wrestler here, we would say that Jerome Young is the man who plays the New Jack gimmick. New Jack isn't a gimmick. New Jack isn't a character. New Jack is Jerome Young. That is the core message put over by every single person on this episode. In Mr. Young's words, I was New Jack when I came in the door and I'm New Jack today. But as Jim Cornette pointed out, there's not even any real benefit to this. I mean, his heyday is long gone. He's barely even active on any kind of capacity anymore. There's no benefit to him being New Jack, but he can't help it. It's not a switch that he can turn on and off. He is this persona. When D'Lo Brown spoke about it, when he was asked, who is Jerome Young? He couldn't answer the question. And when Jim Cornette was asked, who is Jerome Young? He couldn't answer it either because he said he'd never met Jerome Young only New Jack. And in fact, the only time when New Jack so much as mentioned, so much as breathes the word gimmick, is really early on, when he talks about specific props and specific items of clothing beneficial to him in wrestling. He's not a gimmick. He's not a character. He's New Jack. And at number one, New Jack doesn't care. When New Jack is asked about a movie of his life, what would be the final scene in all of that? He laughs. He jokes. He's jovial through this whole thing as he describes himself sitting in a wheelchair, snorting cocaine, raising both middle fingers and saying thank you to the world. There's another situation earlier in the show where he talks about his mother phoning him up after one of these terrible incidents and saying, what the hell are you doing? You're hurting people, you're stabbing people in the ring. And he just laughs it off. He says, calm down, leave me alone. It's, it's just a show. And then, even earlier, you hear about him talk about Vic Grimes. He tased this guy before he threw him off the scaffold, and Vic said to him, Jack, I, I can't feel my legs. New Jack's reply, quite simply, was, eh, you won't need those. Bombs away. And yes, he even says it in that kind of silly voice. So, the biggest takeaway from all of this, and you might have kind of guessed it beforehand, but this is confirmation. New Jack does not care. Anyway guys, that's it, my take on this special New Jack episode of Dark Side of the Ring. But as always, I want to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and throw them down in the comments section below. Obviously, there's a lot of crazy stuff to dig into here, so let's just stay smart with the whole thing. After that, check out the show. It's, again, really worth your watch. And yeah, it's half the length of the Chris Benoit two-parter, but you should check it out anyway then. Follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, yada yada yada. You can follow me on Twitter as well at AndyHMurray if you want to tell me how wrong I am. Goodbye.